What's up guys, Cody here. I wanted to bring you another Madden 16 commentary. Uh, today is really uh, something I'm really excited to bring to you is uh, we're playing Madden 16 Salary Cap Ranked and uh, it's good. Uh, the reason I really like this mode more, more so than really anything else is because this is where a lot of the tournament players have been playing because of the Madden uh, tournament that's coming up and uh, another reason I really like this mode is because it does a really 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 good job of because of the salary cap you can't get I can't you know I it's kind of even like I mean yeah you know some lineups are better than others but for the most part the game itself is is really kind of even and and so I appreciate that uh, a lot because I don't have the best team to be quite honest and so you know when I, when I <laughs> this way I'm I actually kind of stand a shot against these guys uh, and it's cool because it's more about strategy than it really is about who you have um, I mean, part of it is definitely always about who you have, but um, it's also heavily about how you use what you have, which I really appreciate that uh, in this game mode. So, so that's why I'm playing it. And I'll probably be playing this for the majority of the rest of the season. And I give up a touchdown. A big, big play. Um, but I'll probably be playing this majority of the rest of the year. The uh, main reason is this because I enjoy it so much. It, it's a really, really good game mode. This this wide receiver fork play problem runs it out of the. It's in Washington's playbook. Problem has been using that, and uh, it's really effective against zone coverage for sure. Um, a lot of people run crossfire. I've been noticing that too. Uh, like the double loop three or crossfire out of dime or whatever. Um, so yeah, I've been noticing that for sure, and um, actually. Thinking about changing up my play style a little bit. Uh, the main reason I like the nickel 335 odd is because you can get really good pressure. Uh, but part of the problem with the nickel 335 odd and what I'm finding, especially in these salary cap game modes, is that people people really like to attack zone coverage, and they've been attacking my zone coverage with uh, heavy, heavy use of like floods and things like that, like what you just saw. And anyway, so I'm thinking about maybe starting with maybe running a little bit more dime uh, one four six but uh, but yeah anyway he runs commits off the beat, off the bat so we're gonna go ahead and throw a dot to Jordy Nelson and get in the end zone for six uh, I'm running the Cincinnati Bengals offensive book uh, like I said I've been running the and it looks like we're gonna see double loop three a lot of people have been running this defense guys a lot of people uh, but anyway so anyway so I'm um, like I said, so I'm running this uh, Cincinnati Bengals bunch, and you'll be seeing a lot more about that. We had a video talking about that. I actually have, uh, I actually have a pretty good write-up that I'm thinking about putting out to you guys, giving it to you for free, uh, to kind of just thank you guys for all your support. Uh, so let me know if you guys would be interested in that. But uh, but anyway, but yeah. So I don't know why that route to Jordy Nelson over there on the far right when I run that play, it's like. Nine times out of ten, it'll work perfectly, but then the one time, it'll, like, fluke up like it did right there where he doesn't get his feet down, and it drives me insane when that happens. But uh, that's a little goal line play. That's really the only reason I'm in Cincinnati is because of that play right there. So, oh, it's like I said. So I was thinking of going back to the Dime 146, and the main reason, really, is just because it's just, it's just because of the way man coverage works this year guys I'm telling you man coverage is sick this year so he goes pistol he's got Lamar Miller that Lamar Miller is kind of becoming the staple running back I know S Gibbs was talking about him I'm actually gonna try going man out of the 335 odd I've been wanting to try this for a long time and I just haven't really tried it yet anyway See how this works. Yeah, see, man coverage, man. That's like the golden ticket Mike Evans against D'Angelo Hall. And D'Angelo Hall just, just dominates him. See, the only, part, only problem about going man out of this package is I have to play this deep safety, and I don't want to play him. Because I don't want to be responsible if I get roasted deep. See, he's going to go up to him here. Yeah, I don't see. That's the thing about this is like I just can't use her underneath when I run the two-man 
Other, I mean, I'd have to leave. I'd have to leave this guy on an island. I mean, I guess that's fine. I don't know. We'll try it out here. Kind of experimenting a little bit with the defense because I've been getting dotted. <laughs> I've been getting pretty dotted. The guys are running, playing really, really well in this tournament. Uh, they're playing really, really well with uh, the zone coverage for some reason. I've just faced guys that really know how to beat zone and with like different post routes and crap and. And then I see a lot of this, a lot of this compressed stuff. And yeah, it looks like he looks like he's looks like he's gonna beat that just fine. Okay, so it looks like he's gonna be okay against man. Okay, problem with this is like you guys, they don't really line up well against man. See, there's that one on one. So we win the match up there, and I'm kind of. That's what I was saying. Like, I just get so nervous when I leave my corners one on one. But I mean, when I run my cover three zones, I mean, I, you know, I, I mean, I leave them one on one there too. But they're in a zone, and their zone coverage is really high. The thing is, like, when you mix the two together, it really should work pretty well. Um, yeah, there we go. But I just never. I've never. I just. I honestly, and I know, I don't run enough man to man. Been thinking about running some more cover zero occasionally. Like this cover one thief press is really good for how I play the game. But I don't know. A lot of people have been going to this Wildcat stuff. I don't know what this is about. I know Gibbs was talking about it on Twim one year. So he's got his quarterback in. There's the pitch. I'm going to make the tackle. But. Uh, See if we can hold him to three. So defense comes out on the second drive and plays much better on the first drive. I'm trying to figure out how to mess. If I can get this two man under to really do some good stuff for me, I would be really thrilled to run it. Because I got this out of position Ronnie Lott here for that slot corner. I've been trying him out over a couple of other guys that I was using. And he's done really, really well. It's not just not just in coverage, but also like with blowing the run up and stuff, he's just done really well for me out there. And he's only 50 cap value, which isn't too bad for like a nickel corner. And then I went with, I kind of loaded up on corners. I got this, I went pretty high. Uh, I didn't go super high. Like I didn't go as high as you can, but I went with D'Angelo Hall and campus hero Carlos Rogers. I'm trying them out because they have more speed. And my thing, my theory is man coverage is important, but speed is what really matters for your man coverage and also like when I'm running those cover three blitz zones when the guys are pressed up it has to do with your speed if they beat you over the top and then your zone coverage comes into play when they do like aggressive catches and things like that but I'm thinking like with cover two man I won't get a, you know I won't have to worry about that because the aggressive catch uh, won't matter because uh, they'll be Wow. Trying out this James Jones too. I was trying to like save some cap value. And I was running with the Terrence Williams from the Cowboys, the Campus Hero Terrence Williams card. And so anyways, I was trying this um I was trying out that James Jones to see if I could get away with that cuz he never really runs any routes that require route running for me. So I was thinking I might be able to get away with that. Anyway, Coleman. This Coleman is a beast. This fullback. That's a little. I saw uh, Tenacious, and he was running with Coleman. So I took a look at him, and and he's definitely onto something. Coleman is a beast. I really like that that comeback route. Like I said, this bunch is really. This bunch is really coming along. I think. There's so many more things to do. My biggest thing I can't do. Oh, and this is another thing. I was talking one day about the ratings and like what ratings do and things like that. And I'm telling you what, man. If you don't have a good offensive line and salary cap, you get shamed. Like I've had so many, so much easier for time passing the ball. I upgraded my line. I didn't go like super super line. You know, like 80 cap value per lineman, but. I got, um, dang it, I can't remember 
I got, I think I went with like high awareness rating. I'm trying that out. So I've got like 90 pass block and 90 awareness was what I tried to go with and see how that works. And so far it's been pretty, it's been pretty good for me. Here he leaves that little flood open. We were able to pop him. But a lot of people are running cover four, by the way, too. And I don't understand. I've never seen as much cover four as I've seen in this, in this, these last couple of days. Like, I've seen so much cover four, it's ridiculous. So it looks like he's going to go back to his man to man. Dang it. Tried to low pass lead that. I've been really liking the low pass lead this last couple of games. I'm trying to kind of teach myself how to make how to make really, really good reads. Um, so like here, obviously he's a man to man. So I'm trying to mess around with the Z spot play and see if I can't get it to work a little better against when I know he's in man. You know what I mean? Here I can just run with the quarterback, I guess. Paxton Lynch has a little mobility. He's got, I think he's got like 70, I wonder if he has like 79 speed or if he's a little higher. I'm using the gold edition of Paxton Lynch. And, and really, he's done pretty good. Pretty good for me. I haven't had very many complaints. Throw this dot to Boyd in the back of the end zone. And that's why you get catching traffic, man. Like I said, I really do. I think, I think catching traffic matters as much as route running, if not more. I mean, the two together are so important. If you have good catch in traffic, you can make catches like that in the back of the end zone. And it, it just opens up your offense because you can throw balls that normally you're not able to throw. And so I spend a high a high dollar on catching traffic, that's for sure. Eh, dang it. I am having some difficulties with uh, that route. For some reason, they throw it overthrow it. I need it to be a high pass lead but I don't know if I need to use, I don't know they, I, I seem to like overthrow it a lot and it's not because of the quarterback because I overthrow it with like Brady and stuff like that when I had him so we'll have to look into that a little bit I guess so I want to try to run some more man coverage this game I know if you guys have been watching me I hardly ever run man to man um, but I've been trying it out and it's actually it's been working pretty well So here, put my guy. See, Rogers can run with him, but can he beat him? Yep. See, that's not too bad, man. That's not too bad for for uh, for a corner to be able to run with a guy like that. This Terrell sucks. I got I got the ultimate. Oh, there's my guy. That's to that's to Sean or to Schwan Gibson NFL mover. He has 95 speed and 99 zone coverage. And the thing is, like you're running him at safety, so he doesn't really need man to man because you're you know you're either in a zone blitz or you're in cover two man. So he's always in his own. And as you can see there, it, I mean, covers some field. I was running the Georgia Loca final edition card there, but I don't know. I mean, he has 80. Oh crap! That's sacked. Dang it. See, I'm telling you guys, like, these guys are running, like, three or four-man rushes, and they're just really doing a good job of getting in on me. So this guy's going to run this double loop crap. I really don't like this blitz. I, this is the one blitz where I'm like, are you kidding me? They really let this work. Like, and there's not a whole lot that I've been able to do to stop it. Like, it seems to do a really good job of, like, getting really, really good block shed pressure and getting in. But, uh, but anyway... Hit Coleman. That dude teleported. Who was that? I don't know who that was, but dang. Let's see what we can do on third and 18. My guy Jones making a nice catch in the open field, getting down on the ground. We need to capitalize on this turnover for sure. I can't remember. I think he got ball first. I got to watch that. Man, that dude just screamed in. Von Miller, man. See, I wonder if slide protect to the right would be really good against this. 
Because, like, I normally just pinch my line every time. But that ain't working, as you can see. I'm going to throw it. There it is. That was a lucky dot. <laughs> I'm trying to mess around with that Z-spot route. I'm trying to see, like, what I can throw it against. Because, like, when I was watching Skimbo, man, he just, th he just threw it against everything. And was able to aggressive catch it. And I wonder if it is really that good. I think it is. I really do. Packs. Packs. Oh. Dang it. Wasn't able to get it in there. See, right here is the thing. It's like if I go, if I score three, I'm still only, like, in, this is four down territory for me anyway. But I don't know if, I don't know how most guys would play this, but this is kind of four down territory. I mean, he's running the double loop stuff too. So here we're going to get a man read. And let's see. I want to see if bring Coleman across the formation. Maybe he'll overplay it. Yep, got him. There's Jordy Nelson. So right there what I did was um, I knew he's been user control. He's been lurking really well. Uh, you can kind of watch the flow of the game. Like He's been doing a lot of really, really good things with his user defender. And the thing was, though, I knew he was a man-to-man, -man, so I knew I had the C route on the outside, and if he didn't adjust to the C route, he would have to user it because I was a man, and I figured I would get him to use the user control of the running back who was on a little drag pattern because normally they'll jump those crossing patterns. Your boy Boyd for two. Oh, my gosh. Give me the two-point conversion for level of difficulty. I didn't throw it fast enough. I need to I need to throw that route more. I don't throw that route nearly enough. One of the interesting most interesting thing to me about salary cap really is you have to have two tight ends. I hate that. I hate that rule. Because you don't want to waste value, you know, but I don't use I'll I, I mean I hardly ever use my tight ends. Um and you can just use the like the Stanley Havili, who has he has pretty good route running for a tight end. Oh, Colby Fleener, dang it! Uh, but he has pretty good route running for a tight end. He's got like 87 or 88 route running and 86 or something catching traffic, which is pretty good, you know, for a tight end. Um, but I've got the thing is, you can also run him at running back because um, that, that's why fullbacks are like the most versatile player in the salary cap because you can play them at so many positions. Pick. See, man, man coverage, man. Man coverage, man. I'm telling you guys. This is the most man I've ever ran, and it just locks people down. And if you can get some... The cool part about my defense is, like, you can get pressure from man to man, and so your base rush should still work from man, which makes it really, really good, in my opinion, because man coverage just, it makes it so hard. It makes it so hard. Because the, the routes that can beat man, they only beat man, like, very short. You don't have a whole lot of, like, deep bombs that can beat man. You have wheel routes, but if you have, you know, you have wheel routes this year. But, like, if I lurk it or if I know it's coming, you know, I can lurk it and it makes it a lot harder. Right here. I'll say that and I'll get dotted. There's there's the pressure. See, it is. It's like a delayed pressure, but man, when it gets in, it gets in. There's two types of pressure that I run from this nickel 3 through 5 odd. Now, I have like a passive pressure, which is like really, really consistent, which is what you just saw. And then I have the base rush, which is like I only blitz one guy, but it comes in about 50% of the time. It doesn't work quite as good from man to man uh, as it does from zone. The base rush doesn't for some reason. I don't really know why. If he goes for this right here, he's an idiot. I don't know what this guy's doing. If he goes for this, man. But cover three is just so vulnerable. Like, for me, anyways, like, you watch some people play, and they just, because I don't, I want to use her the middle of the field. The sidelines here are so weak against, um, against it. See right here, I want to see how this base align does. 
There's pressure. Yep. The pressure comes in just up, just right on time because of the jam of the two men under. That's what makes it. All right. So right here, uh, this situation, what I like to do is, is I like to play like really, really passive, but I like to kind of at least go towards the end zone. So I like to take a couple shots. This situation. He's going to run his double loop crap. Jordy Nelson making great plays over there. I've learned how to throw that C route. It's like the more you, that's the thing, guys, like the more you play with a system, the better you become at throwing the routes that are really, really hard to throw. I blocked seven people. I blocked seven people. He blitzed four, and they came right through. Welcome to double loop, man. It's a really, really good, it is a really good defense. I don't know how people took this long to get on it. Let's throw it up. Sometimes you have to throw it in the back of the end zone. Right there was one of those times, like, because I knew the pressure was coming hot. Ah, oh, make that play, sir. That's the catch and traffic thing. I mean, Jordy Nelson has 99 catch and traffic, and he still dropped that. So, so I'm saying so, that's, that's why it's so important because some, you know, he'll catch it more than most. But anyway. We'll take our three here. We'll go into halftime. I think that'll give us a pretty good cushion. I think we get football at halftime. The thing to remember, too, like if you're playing these games to win, come out in the second half, and you got to be really, really focused on playing, playing, playing really efficient football when you get out there. Go more man-to-man, -man, man. Been playing well for me. I just know my responsibility at this point is just deep. Tashan, get you another one, man. This two man under is not too bad, man. It's the most I've ran it all season right here. Uh, I mean, I've ran some like from three through five. I mean, I've ran some two man under from from uh, from dime, but not really ever ran it. A ton from the three three five. They, uh, okay. So offensively, right here, your mindset has to be just efficiency. You have to be willing to take a sack. You have to be willing to throw the ball out of bounds. You just can't turn the ball over. That's the key. I swear, I'm gonna block seven one more time and see. Look at that man. He's just coming clean at me. Get out of the pocket. Go pack. Go pack. Get on the ground. Man, I tell you what, that freaking, I'm going to have to look into that double loop, how to block it, because dang. Think about the double loop, though, because it's open to the flats. So we'll see what we can do against the flats. The other thing about double loop too is like if you run tosses, it's really good too. If you go to like tosses, single back a uh, bunch, and I can do some tossing and things like that. Here we'll just get through with my man Coleman. Yeah, the double loop is a good pass D though for sure. I mean, obviously you guys can tell. Try sliding left though. Let's see. No, wide open. See, the thing about the slide protection is that the blitz angles of the double loop are just so good that if you pick it up, like if you pick up the one side, the other side comes. And then if you, gosh dang, I wonder if I just block a running back and leave everything else alone. Let's see what we can do. My boy Boyd, that's my guy, man. That's like the guy I go to when I need a completion. Let's try blocking the tight end. Let's 
Nelson. Ah. Fourth and twelve. So I gotta be okay with punting this ball. I don't have a whole lot of answers for that double loop yet. I think what we'll end up having to do is just tack the flats because he's three deep, three under, which means number one, you got one on one to the outside, and number two, you have some pretty good opportunities for a couple of other things that you can do with it. Um, but man, I just haven't faced it until I literally haven't seen double loop until I started playing salary cap. Like most people in Mutt don't run. It. I don't know why, but. And it is all over the seller cap. I've seen it in the last like four or five games in a row. Let's see what we can do here. See, he's going with that corner strike play, but the thing about the corner strike play is that it doesn't beat I mean it, it beats man, but it doesn't it doesn't have anything quick, so if the pressure can come in. See, and then you mix up a zone. And we got him. See what I'm saying? And that's how the defense is supposed to work. That's why I, I love this defense so much because you can mix and max your coverages and you don't have to do a whole lot for pressure. Um, and it's also pretty quick to set up. I mean, all you have to do, most defenses, you have to, like, slide guys around. This, all we have to do is move this guy out. That's it. And then we're set up. When I go cover two, I do something like this. Let's see what we can do. I was going with that fork play, so I'm going to get on that. We'll get the pressure in. One-man pressure. If you guys want this defense, you can get it. It is in the uh, description. And so then we get him, like, in this situation? I want to try this and see if it works. We're going to go try to send two-way heat at him. So my main... So he blocks that left side, and we got it coming on the other edge. And then Carlos Rogers, man, this is that's pretty good little pretty good little scheme. I think he's gonna end up quitting out. Got him to three of sixteen. That's not too bad. So good good performance by the defense. The offense did not quite do exactly what I wanted it to, but that's okay, guys. I want to thank you for watching today's video. Just wanted to get out on the sticks, show you some things about seller cap. We'll have a couple of more tips throughout the week uh, on seller cap. I got a lot of things I'd like to share with you.